Okay, so next, let's talk about what can the game do. I mean, the generative adversary network model do. So this game model can be serving as a very powerful generation model. So general can apply the game model in many different generation settings or problems to use them to generate different kinds of images or data instances. In the following pages, we can show you with some examples how to use the game with some minor modifications and apply them to generate different styles of images. So the game model can be used to generate some images from sketches. So by feeding these as sketches as an input for the game, I mean, then we can generate some real world I mean, like images that looks very similar to the real world bags, for example. In this page, we have the inputs of sketches of different styles of bags, so we can feed a sketch as an input for the generator inside the game. And we also have one discriminator to, to distinguish the generation results from true images of the bags. And in this page, we will show you with some case studies about the generation results by the game model. We have the input to be the sketch for the generator. Also, we have true data, right? The true images of bags, which will be serving as the input for the discriminator. We also have some generation results by the generator, which will also be serving as the input for the discriminator, right? So these are true images, just denoting some fake images generated by the generator in the game model. This one is input. Instead of using this noise or the random number as input, here we use some sketches as input for the game model. So you can see the generation results by the generator looks very real actually, even though it's different from the true bags. However, it is still very real actually, especially for the details, right? You can see many details in the generated bags. And styles of this generated bag will also be very different from the true bags. However, they can match the sketches we provide with the generator, right? And some of the generated image, I mean, style, they also looks very real. They also looks very good, actually. Like this one and this one, right? The detail looks very real. If we can make some bags like this, I think not so custom will buy them. Besides generating the images from four bags, we can also generate some images for a person as well by providing with some sketches. In this page, we show you how to generate the real world person faces from the sketches. So here we have an input sketch, some real photos, as well as the generated image, I mean the fake image by the model, by the generator inside the game model. So we have different kinds of sketch input for the game model. Now this phrases as you hear, right? And we show you the true faces by the by the real world data sets. We'll generate some fake images for for, for, for all the sketches. You can see even though the generated images is not the same as the real images as shown here, however, some of the styles, even the smiles, looks very real, right? That's just like the real person. Similar for here, for these examples. So the game can be very powerful in generating the, the image for both the person face as well as some bags as shown in the previous page. Besides generating the faces from sketches, we can also generate some other kinds of data, like from photos, from faces to emoji, as shown in this page. So by providing the game with some photos as well as some like noise inputs, then we can generate the corresponding emoji for the face as well. In this page, we show you with some examples. Now, given the photos, we can generate its corresponding emoji as well. So besides one, I mean, we can also do some other interesting stuff with the game model. For example, we can generate the image of a person at different ages. So here we have the input, which will be input image. We also have some real images for the, for the person. And by applying the game model to the input images, we can generate the face of a person at a different age stages. So it will be very interesting because some of the image also looks very real. We do some comparison with the real world data sets, we find that the generated image looks very real. Also looks very similar to the true images at different age stages. I assume you have also seen some apps, right? By providing your, your image as input, it can generate different images you at your different age, right? Which actually also applies again the, as the backend model. Besides generating image from image or from sketches, we can also generate some image from the text inputs. In this page, we share with the generation of the of the image from the text inputs. So by providing some text description of the photo we plan to generate, we can design one game model to generate its corresponding image. All right, as shown in this page. 
So, I mean, this example, I just want to provide you with some high level ideas about how to apply the GANs to generate different styles of the images. It would be a very powerful model to, gener to do the generation for us, and many of the generation results also look very fancy, looks very real, actually. Okay, so generally that's it for this section. And if you are interested in this example, you may also refer to and you may also search online for some tutorial articles and it can provide you with more detailed information. And here we'll do a quick summary for this section. In this section, we we'll first talk about the discriminative model versus the generative model, right? And we we'll provide you with some examples of the discriminative models. And also we wonder if we can use the order encoder as a generative model and why we need to start the generative models. Then we'll talk about the game model, right? I mean, generative adversary night. When we define this model based on a game between the generator and the, dis and the discriminator. And we also define its loss function and talk about how to train the model effectively and why the iterative updating process, right? And finally, we'll talk about how to use the GAN to the, into the real applications. And we'll share with some examples. And you can also explore more by yourself after class if you are interested in the GAN model. And we'll provide you with a link for the source code of a game model uh, implemented by the PyTorch. And you can try to play with it to generate some faces by yourself after class. Okay, then we have some tasks for you to do, I mean, after class. Uh, please read the, both the materials in the textbook as well as extra reading materials. So it's time for you to start to work on stage 3 on CEM model for the image classification and recognition. And if you are interested in the PyTorch uh, to play with again, then you can refer to this page. And then you can refer to the link by yourself after class. And it's not a required, it's an option for you actually. Okay, so that's it for this section and thank you so much for your attention. Maybe that's it for today's class.